Today we're going to learn to play Prima Carta. Prima Carta is supposed to be an ancient gambling game from a fantasy world called Carasaur, and it fills sort of the role of Pharaoh or maybe Roulette. Um, people are betting on a fairly random occurrence, but there's also some interesting paying attention and card counting involved, which we'll see as we go. This is the Postas deck, which is a precursor of the Vines deck. It's a five-suited deck. It has ten cards in each suit, just numbered one through ten. We also include an eleventh card, the the Emperor, in this, uh, in case you want to use it to play the more modern games. But Prima Carta uses the old five by ten deck, so just uh, just the numbers one through ten. Prima Carta has a lot in common with Solitaire, like Klondike Solitaire, where you play cards up, sorting them by suit. Uh, People are going to bet on individual suits to win, and winning means yours is the suit that finishes first. That can take like five minutes, so it's a pretty long game, but imagine a big gambling hall, lots of people betting on the turn of every card, and sort of the central high rollers paying real close attention to the suits that they own. I'm using these e-cards basically to represent the players, because they're not shuffled into the deck for the original Postus deck. Uh, each player would make a one-coin bet to start the game. And, uh, and after we shuffle, we'll start dealing. I'm the dealer, I'm an extra player. Sometimes the players could deal for themselves, but in a bigger, you know, more formal game, there's a, a, a special dealer who, whose job that is. I'm gonna turn over cards one at a time, go all the way through the pack, and I'm gonna play them up if I can. Um, so the very first card of every suit gets played up, and that means it gets played on the stack of that suit. From that point forward, I can only play the next higher card. So on the four, I would play the five. On the five, I would play the six, all the way until the suit is complete, having wrapped around from ten and back down to three. So and the cards do go in a specific order, too. So the crowns always goes here. The swords always goes here. And I'm just playing them right in front of the people who bet on them. There's the first of every card. That just happens to be the five of crowns. That was good luck. Now I've got the nine of crowns. That's not a playable card. I can't play it on the five. So it goes on top of a discard pile that's going to stack up in front of me. On every turn, I could play the next card on the discard pile if it becomes playable. So I'm always going to check that before I deal another card. Uh, there's the deuce of cups. That can't go anywhere. The three of swords can't go on the one. The one of swords can't go on the four, and so on. We don't have any apples yet. There's our first apple, and that's pretty deep into the deck. Five on the four, six on the five. So I got that six up there. The seven's right below the three, but I can't get the three out of the way. Two on the one. Four on the three. I've reached the bottom of the deck. Um, at least two cards in every suit will have been promoted by now, sometimes more. But right now we've just got two cards in every suit, three cards in red. Now comes a choice for the players. Y to stay in, you now have to play what's called a capo or a cap bet that is equal to the number of cards in your stack. And you're still betting your stack will win. Uh, the player who goes first is the player who received the very first card of the game. That was this four of crowns. So crowns has to make the decision first. Do you wish to play? And of course, they're in the lead, so they're going to play. That's three coins on top of their one. Uh, and everyone else is going to have to pay two if they want to stay in. And maybe somebody is super clever and saw that they're not possibly going to win. So let's say uh, Swords thinks they're not going to win. They're going to fold. They're going to, you know, that money's going to be gone. We're going to keep dealing that stack, uh, but that player can't win. And then let's keep purple in the game. So we have four players, but the, the play is the same. Now, here's the important thing about Prima Carta. I don't shuffle this pack. Again, if you've played Solitaire, you know how this goes. I'm just going to pick it up, and I'm going to go through it again. And I'm going to go through it as many times as it takes to get one of these suits to win. Uh, if you are a perfect card counter, you've already seen everything you need to see to make the decision of whether you're going to stay in. But that's a very difficult computation to make, even if you've seen all the cards. So if you have a little bit of idea what might work, might not, uh, you can try to get an edge in this game, but otherwise you're basically just playing at random. Um, there's still, you know, good and bad heuristics for when to stay in. 
But I'm going to run through the deck one more time and we'll see who's in the lead after the second pass. All right, at second pass, uh, Lox is losing with three. Uh, everything else has four except Crowns, which has five, so no surprises there. At the end of the third pass, uh, we're s I, I, I'm not dealing exactly evenly. I think Crowns is still in the lead. Yeah, Crowns is still in the lead. Not a surprise, but there's a one and then a two from Cups. And all I need is the three of Cups to finish this string now. So Cups just jumped into the lead. And the three of Cups wins. So after being behind for most of that game, the Cups came ahead and actually beat uh, Crowns. Let's see how what happens and who wins next, who finishes next. Oh wow, Crowns was in all kinds of trouble. Let's see. Fruits has just finished. Uh, we still have a ways to go on these other suits. Oh, Swords is in such trouble. Wow. Deuce and Trey. There's finally the Crowns. There's the three and then the four of locks finishes that. And now look at this. The nine and ten of swords are still in the wrong order. I still have to go through the deck one more time to play out the nine and then the ten. And that's how you play Prima Carta. Normally we would only finish to the first, the winning suit. And that was this player and this player gets all of these coins. So looking back, uh, statistically we know that locks was more likely to win because they had one more card at the start, but only one more card. Um, these players you know, we're probably statistically right to fold, but maybe the sword player saw something like that, that reverse 9-10 in the deck that he knew was just not going to work uh, and was so very smart to fold. And then here's our winner of the cups, which is the suit that finished first. So that's the basics of Prima Carta. It's an old, old school gambling game, very slow paced. Uh, imagine a lot of players sort of making bets on this during the game. Uh, and you'll kind of imagine how it might have been popular, but, uh, but it's way too slow for a modern casino, way too slow for most players. Um, one interesting thing about the game is, having seen all of the discards, you can actually develop some skill about deciding when to bet and when not to. But then the speed of running those cards out just takes quite a while and there's nothing else to do. So, you know, it's a uh, acquired taste maybe, but uh, the point really wasn't to make a fun game in this case. It was to make a game that I could build some fiction around. I hope you get a chance to read that when it's out. Uh, meanwhile, I hope you enjoy Prima Carta and all the other games with the Postus deck, and I'll see you at the table.